The future of mankind is being decided behind closed doors. In laboratories all over the world, scientists are working on projects designed to take man beyond the confines of this Earth. You are looking at the actual models of spacecraft now being developed by agencies of the United States government. This is an Apollo spacecraft designed for elliptical orbit of the moon. Its lunar landing vehicle can transport three men safely to and from the moon's surface. These are other types of manned and remote control mechanisms, each designed for a specific function, many already in operation as satellites of this Earth, some in readiness for the moonshot, others designed for probes in deep space, a few to serve as space stations, and the most complex of all, prototypes of craft capable of putting a man on the surface of another planet. The wheel was one of man's first inventions and has been with him all of his civilized life. But now it, like so many other of his creations, must be modified to fit his new demands. These are three types of variable radius wheels designed to transport a vehicle over a rocky surface. New concepts are being created almost daily. Some will never get beyond the drawing board but others, or their descendants, will become part of man's greatest adventure, the exploration and colonization of space. All over the world, men and women are working to make that dream a reality. Every aspect of the journey is being analyzed from the tiniest control devices to the mightiest rocket engines. But it's not enough to just get there. Just as the great explorers sailed from Spain and England and France to discover the Americas so that the colonizers might come later, so will our exploration spacecraft precede the colonizers of the planets. Already plans are being made for the colonies. Sources of food and power must be found. Artificial atmosphere is created. Everything done to build an Earth away from the Earth. No man living today can predict exactly what the future holds. But this much we do know. All through man's march across this earth, the wildest dreams and fantasies of one age have become the commonplaces of the next. The motion picture you are about to see can be called today a fantasy of the future. But one day, maybe not too far distant, audiences will be able to look back on it in the same spirit with which we view pictures about the first covered wagons crossing the plain. In the fear-ridden years following the Great Atomic War, the Earth and its people had been reduced to a state of death and destruction. Those who had survived the tragedy began building anew with a hope for the future. But still the world remained divided. This time, man-made boundaries stretched beyond mere countries, 
forcing the isolated separation of one vast hemisphere from another. These two conflicting powers became known as the North Hemis and the South Hemis. Heading South Hemis's top security project, Red Planet, was Dr. Albert Gordon. Working with him was his wife, Dr. Ruth Gordon. They and a carefully selected team of scientists had labored in secret for five years on the project which hoped to put the first man on the planet Mars. Now, just days before the launching, the first public information releases were being given to certain journalists who would spread the story to the world if the project were a success. If it met with failure, neither the citizens of South Hemis nor their rivals in the Northern Hemisphere would know that it had even been tried. Astronaut Craig Matthews was in charge of briefing a government journalist on the details. Information had been leaked from North Hemis that their scientists were also trying to reach Mars, and the pressures were building in both governments to make sure that their men landed on the planet first. Man-carrying space stations had been circling the Earth for several years, and trips to and from the stations were not unusual. The first step in Project Red Planet was to transport the personnel in a normal manner to a specially equipped station. The second phase would be the actual launching from this artificial planet, where the spacecraft would no longer be subjected to the Earth's gravitational pull. Ground control will now take command for launching. Blast off is set for 02100. All personnel must be at their stations. You've worked so hard. We've come so far. Just keep the faith and courage you've always shown. Dr. Gordon, forgive the intrusion. As personal representative of the President, I want to extend best wishes for the success of Project Red Planet from all the people of South Ennis. Thank you. We're approaching second unit countdown. Our hopes for the future go with you. All visitors must leave the launching area. Passengers will board immediately. Take good care of her, Craig. Now you see that he does. Well, I promise not to let her out of my atmosphere. Ah, he's always <laughs> joking. You know, this flight to the space station could become just a routine stopover. An interplanet bus stop. I hope your mother approves of me. Do you? I think she does. Mm, of course. Nancy, have you lost your confidence? Don't be silly. Countdown entering stage red. All personnel stand ready. Synchronized units now being switched over to master control. This is control. Attention personnel. Project Red Planet, prepare for flight countdown. Begin your lane reports. First stage rockets ready. Main rocket stage ready. Fuel ready. Stabilization center ready. Power ready. Air conditioning ready. Radar ready. Guidance ready. Air lanes ready for takeoff. Countdown red. Continue at 34. Attention flight personnel. Loading elevators are now being withdrawn. Countdown continues at 20. All stations prepare for zero red. Countdown continues at 10.
Zero red, minus five. Project Red Planet. All units clear. Switch over to standby. Flight number 87 from Earth. Preparation been completed? Yes, sir. Welcome, Dr. Gordon. It's good to see you, Commander. Hello, Paul. Commander Daniels? Right this way, gentlemen. My men will take care of your crew. Oh! Hey! Astronaut Johnson just blasted off from Mars. <laughs> Tell us when you get there. I will if I can find a telephone. Don't reverse the charges. Actually, we have the Mercury ready for you. Two days ahead of schedule. We've gained so much by assembling the ship here. Not just the fuel and added rocket power. But we've been spared the atmospheric strain against the ship. Which could well mean the difference. Without a doubt. Turn on spaceship Mercury. It's not going to be easy, you know, staying behind. Now look, you were the one who said this flight wasn't going to be a spaceman's holiday. So just consider yourself as being lucky. <laughs> I hope you're wrong. I think it really means you're more important here. Any changes? Not so far. Here are the micronic charts. The solar reports continue to verify our last calculations. Couldn't ask for better conditions. How long will it last? An estimated five or six weeks. Beyond that, we'd be taking a chance. If all continues as planned, we shouldn't have any problems. None whatsoever. Commander, we are receiving an encoded television wave. You can screen it for us here. Yes, sir. It couldn't be coming from one of our ships. All flights have been diverted, with the project in effect. 
We'll find out soon enough. We request your aid. Identify yourself and state the nature of your request. This is Captain Torrance and Dr. Martin aboard the ship Typhoon from North Hemis. We request permission to land for emergency repairs. I've informed our base. You have permission. We'll prepare for your ship to land. Thank you. We'll trouble you as little as possible. I'll switch you to control. Attention, landing personnel on flight deck. Attention, stand by to receive unassisted landing. Repeat, stand by to receive unassisted landing. Of course, you realize we must make our own repairs. I want you to know how much we appreciate your assistance. If we could work this way, north and south combined, think of it, the advantages. I agree with that. To its eventuality, Captain Torrance. Thank you. If the attitudes of our governments could somehow be changed. Uh, <laughs> you know how politicians work. Always years behind science. What brought you into our radius? It was unintentional, I assure you. We were flight testing a new synergic curve pattern to lessen fuel consumption after orbit. Well, we've also been working on that. Oh, if only we were allowed to exchange data. <laughs> there, politics instead of science again. Still, I believe we should try to instigate a new research exchange. We've all thought that for a long time. Maybe if we took the initial step, Mars is our immediate project. Mars? Now that you know. Spaceship Mercury. Have a look at it. This is the culmination of all our research. How close are you to its completion? Well, the ship itself has been ready for quite some time. We've just been waiting for the proper solar conditions. And your time plan? Yes, how soon? Countdown has already been set for tomorrow. If there are no drastic solar changes, we'll proceed with the plan. Any questions? May I ask you? We've already imposed enough. The hour is going late. Good luck on your flight tomorrow. Thank you. Good night, Doctor. Until later. Good night. Good night. We had no indication of this. It may leave us no alternative. Don't take too much upon yourself. Yes? Dr. Martin. Come in. I hope you don't mind this intrusion. No, not at all. Be seated. Thank you. After all these years, we can finally do A discussion I've looked forward to. I've long admired your writings. That's an honor coming from you. Dr. Martin, I've observed your ship. Anything unusual? It's designed for deep probe, very similar to our Mercury. What is the Typhoon's flight range? As one scientist to another, I'd like to discuss the entire matter. But you must realize that it's entirely out of the question. Captain, do not attempt the flight. 
Regardless of what you believe, we cannot take any unnecessary risks. General, I can't accept defeat. If your ship is malfunctioning, you'd be merely throwing your life away, and with it, the entire project. I understand your determination, but I must order you to return to the base. We cannot turn back now. Captain Torrance. Captain Torrance. Then, we've reached an impasse. I can only express my regrets. No more so than I, Dr. Gordon. I understand. Dr. Gordon. Good night. Good night. It's decided. We leave at once. For North Hemis? No, for Mars. I think our friends will be somewhat surprised. Captain, that's not our main concern at this time. Our repairs may not hold up. I went over the entire system, and it proved out perfect. Huh? You checked it. Remember, my friend, what this could mean. I realize this situation completely. But do you? Personnel, clear the flight deck without delay. What was the reason for doing that? Someone might get hurt in the blast off. Too late now. Full power. Full power. Is he badly hurt? I can't tell. Flight pattern of the Typhoon is directed for Mars. They weren't ready. You're so right, but they were obsessed. How are you feeling? Not too bad. Just shaken. I'll be fine by flight time. Paul. 
Doctor, you wouldn't replace me now. Not at this point. I have no choice. Nancy, tell him I'm all right. The x-rays reveal a minor concussion has resulted. I'm sorry, Paul. We can't take the chance, Paul. Craig will replace you. I'm so happy Dr. Gordon chose you for the first flight. Mars, Nancy, think of it. I am. Before you know it, I'll be back with you in South Hills. Craig. Please don't let me act like a little girl now. You won't, I'm sure. Final call. A medallion with our names on it. Pin it on the flag you place on Mars. I will. Begin our relay. Yes, Doctor. This is Earth Control, calling Project Red Planet. Stand by to checkpoint communication relay. Relay communications in effect. Control ready. Are you ready? Ready, sir. Attention. Countdown red. Recline. Switch to auto. Begin our relay.
temperature reading? 0.934, rising. That checks. Mm-hmm. Say, what is this thing? Good luck charm? Something like that. Or pocket money for Mars. It's a medallion for history. So what is that? An asteroid? No. What's so interesting? I think it's an old friend of yours. Come here and see for yourself. The Discoverer satellite. That was my first dream. We'll see you on the way back. It's incredible. Remaining in orbit so long, huh? It opened the way to outer space. That's final, General. Signing off. South Hemis will get to Mars before we did. But they won't. Our ship's perfect. Even the general admitted. Our Hemis might have suffered for it. Something's wrong. Our course is changing. Huh. It couldn't be. Our angle is perfect. Can't you understand? I said it was changing. It won't hold. You're wrong. Check it again. I have, twice. We're being pulled away by a powerful magnetic field. It's the sun. The directional rockets. Won't they correct it? They might if we fired all of them. We've no choice. I intend to. Just hope it's enough. Get ready. Positions. Recline. Let's monitor Earth. Yes. That's right. Stand ready for checkpoint on third cycle. Spaceship Mercury passing through nearest proximity of Sun's periphery. Transmit your readings at 30 second intervals. Before I return to unified control, I want you to know that our latest figures coincide with the reports from the space station and the first flight to Mars continues in perfect trajectory. There it is, Craig. Mars. What a magnificent sight. It looks like it's just waiting for us. A distress signal. How could that be? Unless... Emergency. Spaceship Typhoon calling. Emergency. We are being pulled into the sun. Our auxiliary rockets lack the power to hold. I repeat, we are being drawn into the sun. No power to hold. The magnetic radius. Is there anything we can do? Check position. Within radius point one four. Could we possibly get to them? We have the power. I realize that, but what about the fuel? Course on Typhoon. Yes, sir. Two lives are at stake, and we can save them. But the project? The project is for man. And you won't change your decision, sir? We can't. Ready? Recline. Prepare for retro.
Typhoon. Emergency. This is our last signal. Our rocket power has failed to withstand the sun. Noise. Has contact been made? It's meteors being fired from the sun's heat. The pole. Prepare yourself to resist the pole. We have failed. Our eagerness failed us. We needed more time for preparation. Radio Typhoon. Listen carefully. It's too late to help us now. For your own safety, don't even try. Continue on your course. You see? They want to spare us. Radiation up. It's hopeless. I don't blame you. I wanted it too. Don't torture yourself. It's all over. Project Red Planet. Report to the main control room immediately. Attention, all personnel. Project Red Planet. Report to the main control room immediately. All stations are red alert. I repeat, all stations are red alert. Mercury? Yes. What's the other object? We're not positive yet. It created a change of course. We're waiting now for some word. Speed set. Lock control. Get ready. Check the pressure. Remember. Yes? You'll have only a matter of minutes to effect the transfer. I'll make it. Just hold her steady. Thank you. 
Okay? Now, right, let's get this thing off. Yeah. Now, how do you feel, huh? Better? Now, let me help you, Dr. Martin. The figures were right. Could we make it back to Earth? We've consumed too much of the fuel. doesn't show the terrain. But we have to land there. Listen, Craig. Yes? Emergency fuel must come by rocket from South Hemis. What could have gone wrong? Not even a signal. Could it be ionosphere blackout? I doubt it. But perhaps if we... Sir, from Spaceship Mercury. At last, some word. We lost contact after receiving the message. Our fuel supply is exhausted. The landing on Mars is no longer possible. We'll attempt to land on Angkor, which is in the Martian orbit. If we're successful, we'll require a fuel rocket. Nothing over here. The thing is checking over the ship, Doctor. Any damage? Everything appears in order. Then we can leave if we get the fuel. Probably the rocket is already on the way. Come on, get ready. We'll have to set up the guidance antenna to receive the fuel rocket. Come in, Dr. Gordon. Commander, the fuel rocket launching has been completed. We can rescue them. If their guidance antenna can land the fuel rocket and the outcome is in their hands. from landing the fuel rocket, Doctor. Yes, but I believe the condition is diminishing with the planet's rotation around Mars. Look.
planet does absorb the sun's rays. Then life must exist there. In all probability. Just think, a new world is almost within our grasp. Imagine the discoveries we could make when we almost got there. If you hadn't sacrificed for us, you might have attained your goal. A life has more value than any goal that man can strive for. Let's relax and celebrate. <laughs> We have two reasons. Craig's forthcoming marriage to the nicest girl I know, and the rocket bringing fuel. Success to both. <laughs> Success to both. <laughs> <laughs> both. <laughs> it's strange. Any other time, a fuel rocket couldn't compare with Nancy. But now, I'm not so sure. Subdue the universe, but woman will always subdue man. <laughs> now. To business. The guidance antenna is still directing the rocket. It should be in our landing range presently. Let's get ready to receive it. Switch to automatic landing control. It should indicate reversal stage. Does your reading check? Yes. Observatory reports that the pilotless fuel rocket has crashed on Angkor. Everything possible is being done to establish further contact with our astronauts. As soon as we have any word, you will be notified. Thank you. given up hope, have you? No. We're alive, and that's what's important. You're right. The transmitter's strong enough, the signal should be received. It will be. Seldom have I seen a man more ingenious than Dr. Gordon. the interference will decrease? No, sir, not yet. Have you tried every wavelength? Yes. The 
distance and time element, everything checks out. I know I could make it. Report from flight station. We are still unable to make contact. A piloted fuel rocket is our last course of action. I strongly recommend Paul Clinton as the man best qualified to undertake the flight. This is not an easy decision for me to make. Piloted rocket ship still requires additional testing. The commander could very well be right. Still, if there is some way to be certain that our men are still alive, I'll leave the decision to you, Paul. There's no other way. I have to go. Mercury, calling Earth. I'll keep trying. Calling Earth.
Dr. Gordon. Dr. Gordon, look. Out there. Greg, let's go. Yes, sir. Fuel rockets. Paul? What creatures? No, they're out there. How else do you explain the condition of Paul's body? We may never know the answer. But he gave his life so that we might go on living. That we will always know. We'll be taking off shortly. For Earth. at ramp seven.
Craig will be here shortly. He's a hero. I did thank you, thank you. Oh, I can hardly believe it. Oh, you're so very kind, children. Oh, I'm so thrilled. This is my aunt. Oh, I've never been so happy and proud. Oh, I'm just too excited even to speak. Attention. Here is the latest bulletin on the spaceship Mercury. Landing will take place within the next several minutes. We are standing by to give you a detailed description of this historic event. Just thinking about you made me know we'd come back. I had faith. You're a wonderful woman. I love you. Although the first attempt by man to reach Mars had met with failure, a greater insight to the real problems of mankind had been achieved. The way was now open for both sides to begin working together in peace. And out of their combined knowledge and effort, all men would come to know a better world in which to live. And one day, perhaps, the entire universe.